Hello friends, I'm Susie Perez, founder of VinMaps. Thank you so much for joining me today. At VinMaps, we create beautiful and formative wine region maps for your personal or business wine space. Our maps are meant to tie the wine in your glass to where it came from. Our maps adorn the walls of wine bars, wine cellars, wine caves, tasting rooms, restaurants, high-end hotels, nationwide and around the world. Through our YouTube channel, we talk about wine, do wine tastings, talk about the people and places of wine and other related fun and interesting topics. In today's video, Cava, the sparkling touch of Spain or Toco de España. We are of course exploring Spain's most celebrated sparkling wine. This is our second to four videos dedicated completely to sparkling wine. So pour yourself a glass of cava if you haven't already, or perhaps you've got a Rioja lurking in your wine cabinet. Grab a glass and let's dig in. In Spain, cavas are enjoyed both during times of celebration as well as year round. Regardless of when you decide to enjoy them, Spain's top sparkling wines will easily add a touch of shimmer, elegance, and fun, and most times at an incredible value. Today we'll be tasting three cavas, Dubon Cava Brut Reserve, Conde de Caral Blanc de Blanc, and Segura Viudas Reserva Heredal. Before we dig in, I have to share with you what I'm calling the geographer's confession, however. The geographer and me wanted to talk about Spain in terms of geography, geomorphology, stats, etc. But let's face it, we're still getting to know each other, and I felt that really wouldn't necessarily go over too well. So, I scaled down several times the content for this video. I tried to keep a few highlights though. So before we get into this, the main subject of Cava and our tasting, let's explore Spain's geography though and then do an overview of Spain's wine just to get some orientation. First, let me say that to explore wines from Spain is to take an adventure in a land rich in history, art, and culture. Not to mention geomorphology and viticulture. Exploring Cava is like an inviting doorway into further discovery and respect of Spain's complex, fascinating, and evolving world of wine. So here are just a few tidbits with regard to Spain's physical geography. Consisting of the southwestern tip of Europe and within the larger Iberian Peninsula, Spain separates the Mediterranean Sea from the Atlantic Ocean. Spain covers a wide latitudinal range from around 44 degrees north in northern Spain to 28 degrees north in the Canary Islands. Most of Spain is made up of a large highland plateau, the Meseta Central, which is divided by the central Sierra mountain range, Sistema Central. The Cantabrian mountains, Cordillera Cantabrica, border this plateau to the north. The Iberian Cordillera Sistema Ibérico to the northeast and east, and the Sierra Morena to the south and the lower mountains of the Portuguese frontier and Spanish Galicia to the northwest. The Pyrenees mountains, of course, run across the neck of the peninsula and, from Spain, and form Spain's border with France at the northeast of the country. With its extensive area of mountain ranges and elevated plateaus, Mesetas, Spain has the second highest mean elevation in Europe at 660 meters, second only after Switzerland, believe it or not. These topographic features have a significant influence on climate and Spain's overall geomorphology. In terms of viticulture, the average altitude of vineyards is over 600 meters, 2,000 feet. With this altitude, a large number of vineyards are able to produce grapes with good levels of color and acidity, as nighttime temperatures are relatively low, and grapes do not ripen until the end of a prolonged growing season. So let's talk a little bit about Spain's overall wine scene. The most widely planted varietals are Arien, Tempranillo, Bobal, Garnacha, Morostrel, Pardina, Macabeo, and Palomino. The country's most often revered grape is the red Tempranillo, of course. The wine regions considered to be the most important are La Rioja, Ribera del Duero, Jerez, where sherry is made. Rias Viachas, Priorat, and of course, Benedes. Spain has more land planted to grapevines than any other nat nation at over 2.5 million acres, believe it or not, yet does not produce the most wine. This is in part due to many of the vines being old and on low yielding or very infertile land in some cases. 
third among wine producing countries worldwide, where the Spanish consume on average six gallons of wine per person per year. With regard to cava in particular, in addition to being enjoyed in Spain, cava has a large presence in international markets, becoming the most exported wine in 2009. In 2019, 322.4 million grapes were used to produce cava and 249,544,696 total bottles were produced. That's a 2.07% increase from 2018. These numbers are from El Consejo Regulador Dio Cava, key figures for 2019. So now let's dive into cava. Cava is, of course, a Spanish sparkling wine and is almost exclusively produced in the Northeast Spanish Autonomous Region of Catalonia, or Catalonia, if you prefer. To be called cava, a Spanish sparkling wine must be made in the same method as used in making champagne in Champagne, France, by the rigorous and complex Maton Chapinois, whereby yeast and sugar are combined with a still wine base in bottles, and a secondary fermentation occurs also within each bottle, which traps carbon dioxide in the wine, resulting in this beautiful, bubbly, sparkling wine. The yeast, being the catalyst for this fermentation, fall to the bottom of the bottle, creating what's called lees. The lees can give the wine rich pastry notes as aging occurs. However, cava may not be referred to as the Spanish champagne, as the French sparkling wine has a protected status under the European Union. This is also the message that the Comité Interprofessionnel du Vin de Champagne, CIBC, has urged upon international wine lovers since the organization's founding in 1941. In most cases, cava is made from a mixture of three grapes with the classic trio of Macabeo, Jarello, and Parlada. Cava is officially defined by the Consejo Regulador del Cava in Spain as a vino espumoso de calidad producido en una región determinada, a quality sparkling wine produced in a designated region and has a designation of origin DO status. Lower quality Spanish sparkling wines are made by the tank or bulk process method and cannot be called cavas. These wines are called sparkling wines or vinos espumosos. So let's talk a little bit about cava history. So how did cava start in Spain? From my research, it appeared first that just one individual was responsible, but of course, it seems that like many undertakings of such magnitude, there are most likely many players involved. For in my part, as a sparkling wine lover, I'm thankful to them all. We'll start with a fellow named Luis Justo Villanueva who was the first Dean of the College of Industrial Engineers of Barcelona in 1863. Luis Justo carried out an important part of his informative work, teaching, researching, and advising within the Catalan Agricultural Institute of San Isidro between 1861 and 1876. As a result of his work, he is recognized as the developer, and now I didn't say producer, I said developer, of Catalan cava to, among other achievements, the method of the second fermentation in the bottle and producing an extensive technical scientific work on this matter. Supposedly as well, two of the first producers of the Spanish sparkling wine were Frances Gill and Domingo Soberano de Reus, who made some of their own sparkling wine for the Universal Expo of Paris in 1868. This early version of cava was produced using the same varieties of French grapes, as the ones used in the region of Champagne. And then we have the next personality in the mix, Josep Raventos, who had married into the Codornu family. Um, and Raventos, he was also a student of Luis Justo, our scientist and engineer from earlier. He brought production of cava into practice around 1872 into Codornu's wineries. Raventos, the story goes, had been on a sales trip through Europe, selling still wines, and happened to visit the Champagne region. He was enchanted with it, and he arranged to bring back Champagne making equipment to the Penedès. And by and by, the first traditional method sparkling wine was created for Côte d'Ornu, circa 1872. Reading between the lines, it seems plausible that many winemaking families worked in concert to make the creation and sustainability of cava 
stick and grow to its thriving conditions of today. When first produced, this tra traditional method of sparkling wine was called champagne or cham champagne, champagne <laughs> for the next. With time, Penedès winemakers decided their sparkling wine was different enough from champagne and decided on the cava, meaning cave or cellar in Catalan. This was also required within the 1970s as Champagne authorities were defending their name as protected through the wine laws. Okay, so hopefully there's some interesting background for you. With that, on to our three tastings. Okay, so let's talk about the grapes that are used in Cava. The varieties authorized to produce grapes for the production of base wine and Cava are the following ones. Our whites include Macabeo, Jarello, with his X, Paralada, Malvasia, Subarat, Parent, and Chardonnay. The reds include Garnacha Tinta, Monastre, Pinot Noir, and Trepat. Few words on the classic three grapes used. Macabeo is a traditional variety and produces a wine with balanced acidity and a delicate aroma. Paralada offers a subtle, floral aroma and produces gentle wines of moderate alcoholic strength. Jarello with an X. This indigenous variety produces full-bodied wines with a good acidity. So what are the different types of cavas? Cava is labeled according to the amount of sweetness added to the wine at bottling, similar to champagne, in terms of grams per liter of sugar. Most cava is brut or extra brut, so on the drier side, less sugar. Cava can be non-vintage, including a mixture of wines from different years or vintage from one year, usually a year that has done really well. Rosé cavas are also made. Like champagne, cava ranges in sweetness according to the following types from low to high, respectively. So of course we have the brut nature at zero to three grams per liter, extra brut with zero to six grams per liter, and brut zero to 12 grams per liter. Then we have extra secco, secco, semi-secco, and finally dolce, sweet, at 50 plus grams per liter, and that's getting pretty sweet. The term reserva on a bottle of cava indicates that it has been aged on its leaves for at least 15 months, while gran reserva means that it has been aged on its leaves for at least 30 months, twice as long as the reserva. In Penedes, in particular as well, since 2014, you may also see the words classic Menedes on a bottle, which means that the cava was made with 100% environmental adherence and techniques and has been kept at the winery for a minimum of 15 months. So specifically, where is cava made? According to our friend, Consejo Regulador del Cava of Barcelona, certain municipalities within the following provinces may produce cava. Alava, Badajoz, Barcelona, Girona, La Rioja, Leada, Navarra, Tarragona, Zaragoza, and Valencia. Within this list, the most, at least 85% of cava is produced within the Benedis wine region, just outside of Catalonia's capital city of Barcelona. So unlike most DOs, the cava designation is multi-regional. But as I said earlier, most of cava is made in Catalonia, within the Penedes, which also happens to have a DO status in and of itself. So we have a layering of DOs happening. Most cava production is centered around the town of San Soderni de Anoya, a mix of large and small bodegas, wineries. Many family owned elaborate their cava here. One reason why Spain elected to tie wine to place was to protect the quality of the wine. This is in part because, for instance, wine fraud would occur on a regular basis where quality wines were being diluted with bulk wines, which is rather hard to believe, but it happened. Spain's wine scene is constantly evolving. At the end of the day, I consider this a good thing for wine lovers, as this change is moving toward better and better quality through time. As well, there is an overall increase toward environmental awareness and a sense of stewarding the land which in the end actually leads to a higher quality wine in your glass. Okay, so hopefully there's some interesting background for you. I know it's been a long <laughs> journey here. <laughs> so now we will try our three wonderful cavas, all from the Penedes. So we have from left to right, the Bon Cava Brut, uh, Conde de Carral, Blanc de Blanc, and Segura Villodas, Reserva Heredad. Okay, so starting, with Dibong Cava Brut Reserve. 
This is from the Pinor Bodegas wineries, and it's made from the three classic cava grapes, Macabeo, Paralada, and Chiranjo. The source vineyards consist of 75 hectares of trellised vines 1,000 feet above the Mediterranean. And uh, okay, let's try it. So this is a brute, so we expect it to be drier. Ah, nice and fresh. All of these have just beautiful fine bubbles. Just look so marvelous. They literally sparkle. Mm. Refreshing, clean, nice. Acidity, a um, little bit of slight tint of lemon, and the beginnings of pastry notes. So this one is less complex than these next wines, but it's perfect. It's great for um, a brunch or aperitif. So can't go wrong, and goes with so much in terms of food. Okay, so next we have the beautiful Conde de Cara, Blanc de Blanc, Blanc de Blanc, meaning white wine from white grapes. Uh, Conde de Cara is a wine producer associated with the Freshenay Group. So they're located in Torre la Vie in um, Benedes, Spain. Sparkling wines have been produced under the Conde de Cara label at the estate since the 1960s, and the former Cavas Carbo of San Sederni. The Anoya was purchased by Jose Maria de Corral Borel. Okay, let's try some Conde de Corral. So this is um, white grapes only. And these are all non-vintage, so a mixture of non-vintage wines. Okay, immediately I'm getting a little more complexity from the Devon. Um, I'm already getting notes of pastry or sourdough pancake, if you will. And uh, wonderful floral aromatics are coming through as well. And the bubbles are fine, just superb. Beautiful. Beautiful light gold color mm, delicious so you get some fruit notes here um, even I uh, want to say a little bit of orange just a tinge of orange and um, slight bit of honey and vanilla And a nice mineral finish. It's a beautiful wine. Such a great value. All of these are less than $30. Okay, next we have beautiful Segura Viudas Reserva Edad. So this beautiful bottle of sparkling wine has been aged on its lees for you know, more than 30 months more than 30 months. I've tried this one before, but it's been a while, so I'm very happy to revisit. This has, if you haven't noticed already, a very ornate, gorgeous bottle. Pewter crest here, anchored by a curved pewter base that acts as the bottle's own coaster. Ooh, so this is quite an elegant piece here, and wouldn't this be lovely to uh, bring to a host at um, a summer evening party. Segura Viudas Winery sits just outside of Barcelona and is Freshenay Group's boutique cava maker. The winery is housed in original buildings dating back to the 11th century, so a lot of history here. Here the winemaker has included the very best wines from each vintage which have been aged in the bottle in contact with the leaves, as I said, for more than 30 months. This aging ends with the winemaker giving every bottle the magic touch of the pointage the shake of the wrist, intensifying the contact of the lees with the wine, creating a more complex bouquet. So let's give it a little swirl and taste. 
all of these just have beautiful fine bubbles and this has a really gorgeous gold deeper gold definitely think of puffed puff pastry or um, brioche right away definitely get the pastry notes right away. It's just amazing how that yeast works its way magically. This is by far the richer tasting and more complex than all of them, which makes sense. It's been um, aging, aging for a, a, a while. <laughs> and um, has a little bit of dried fruits. It's rich and complex and wow, it's just amazing. Hints of honey and fruit. It's intensely satisfying, so I highly recommend. Highly recommend all of these actually. So, thank you for joining me and watching this, our second episode of Sparkling Wine. I hope you've enjoyed it and that you've learned some new things about kava, perhaps that you didn't know. Before we end today's visit, hold on just a moment, I wanted to quickly share a couple of items with you that do tie into our topic today. At VinMaps, we have a wonderful product called Wine Buff Spain. This is a microfiber towel that is perfect for polishing your wine glassware and crystalware. It makes a perfect gift. It's also very nicely priced, under $20. Wouldn't that be nice to show up at a party with a bottle of wonderful cava and a wine buff, right? We also have our beautiful Spain wine regions map that you saw earlier in the video and uh, that's available framed and on gallery after canvas. So that's those, those two options are ready to hang. And then we also have our prints to paper and to canvas, which you frame, so. Those are actually going to be available to you just because you watched this video for $15 off whichever um, option you choose, framed, gallery wrapped, canvas, or paper or canvas print, $15 off. Use the code CAVA, C-A-V-A, in the shopping cart. And that's um, as a way of thank you for spending time with me today. And here is our beautiful, Spain wine buff. <laughs> and this microfiber towel really does work on glassware and crystalware. It washes well, and it's just a really fun wine gift. So check it out. And we have several other uh, countries, Italy, France, Australia, and we also have Napa Valley and Sonoma and coming soon, California statewide. So these wine buffs are Awesome. Really fun. So thank you so much for sharing your time with me today. I hope you you'll hit the subscribe button and come back and see me. Our next episode in the sparkling wine series will feature Italy's Prosecco. For now, this is Susie Perez, founder of VinMaps, saying salute.